everybody. Gabello here with Soul Vitamins. My uh, trusty brother partner, brother Jonathan Rushing, is out of town traveling and is not able to join us. And uh, I was hoping he, he would because I really want to discuss this with him. So maybe when he comes back this week, uh, next week, we'll continue the conversation. But I got a good friend of mine, young man in his, uh, you still in your early 20s or have you graduated to your mid 20s yet, Jesse? <laughs> I am, um, I'll be, actually, I'll be 28 next week, so. Oh, man, he's in his late 20s now. Goodness, getting old. So this is, we have Mr. Desi Day joining us tonight. Uh, fellow, he's an ex-North Carolinian, now living in the uh, state of Georgia, but still, uh, still in the South. Praise the Lord, the South will rise again. <laughs> Says the Dominion Yankee. Um, but Jesse has been serving in worship uh, ministry, music ministry in church. How long have you been in music ministry, Jess? For 10 years? Long as 10 years? Uh, I, well, I guess, yeah, it's longer than 10 years now. I started when I was uh, 14. Started when you were so, 14. So you're 14, correct. You're 14 years. Yep. It happens quite. It happens quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does, man. And I've been on the wait list for the Soul Vitamins podcast since it came out. So, yes, yeah, uh, Jeff actually was uh, one of the first people to kind of get me into a, like a formal podcast. Uh, he has a podcast that we need to get back up going uh, called uh, yes. Soup Geek that he started with the podcast. Uh, yeah. He started with um, uh, our, our, uh, his brother, Brendan Samuel, and I listened to an episode on Star Wars and can, proceeded to call them and talk to them for like an hour. And they're like, you should come on the podcast. And then I was kind of like a somewhat like regular guest member. But uh, but we're not here to talk about Super Geek or Star Wars or how bad Jenny's doing with the whole thing. We're <laughs> I, we'll be here all night if we do that. We, Yes, uh, D Jesse will not eat dinner. He will not spend time with his wife. We will just be sitting here just trashing Disney, and then we'll get into DC, and then it'll be <laughs> over. But we're going to talk about church music. So before we get into modern church music and state of it from a younger, you know, I mean, see, I am, let's see, goodness gracious, I think I'm 15 years older than you. So it's beautiful to get younger close, perspective, close and, I, and I'm and I'm hoping to get some 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 cats that are even younger than you. Um, but you know, kind of give us your testimony. Tell us how you came to faith in the Lord. Tell us how you got involved with um, with music ministry, and and then that'll take us up to our present day, and we'll we'll get into the nuts and bolts of uh, the issues and challenges we have in serving church music. But let's start at the beginning. The beginning of my experience. Oh, well, your faith, you know, so give us a little overview My of faith. your testimony, you know, and your background, because you, you do come from a Pentecostal background. So just walk us through all that, and then we'll get to modern day. I do. So uh, basically, I guess it really started, I've been in church my entire life, you know, like a lot of people in the church, you know, were kind of, I cut my teeth on the pews, you know, we, we had a... Uh, we had we had green pews, so we weren't we weren't a red pew church. So I don't know if that matters to some people, but oh, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> we <laughs> we had the green back hymnal. So, but um, no, nah, it's uh, I started there and just kind of I took the love of music when I was about twelve, and I just you know always liked to sing songs, and you know music was just something that was always around because my family was musical and. You know, I just kind of stayed on top of it. And eventually, you know, I saw my cousin had a guitar and I was like, oh, that looks so cool. You know, I, I didn't really know what it was or, you know, you know, I didn't have an idea about any of that. I just kind of was drawn to it. Um, but I, I only bring that up because it, you know, music was kind of took to a huge part of my faith, you know, becoming what it is. Um, so, but yeah, I started out, you know, Pentecostal and all that and, um, a lot of in the charismatic church. And when I was 18, I was like, I want to go kind of see what's out there. You know, I got to some non-denominational I met people that, you know, played in the music opened up a doorway for me, I guess, you know, I played in, uh, you know, Baptist settings and Methodist settings and, you know, met with Catholics and got into uh, not a whole lot, but a, you know, a slight bit of the, the Jewish realm kind of thing. And then, you know, just kind of, uh, 
it, it was just an experience because the the more you the more you get into um, just different views of the church and what it's supposed to be, it's almost oh, like yeah. that has that's that's radically radically changed for me. Um, How so? so uh, give 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 us give us kind of where you started and where you are today. Yeah, yeah. So I would say radically change in a way of I, I I was more closed off, you know, and it's and I and I, I don't want to I don't want to bash a whole lot on you know the the charismatic view of things, um, but That's a I just the form of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I've kind of seen a little bit of both, and right now I'm just. I don't know. There's some of it that I question now and I'm like, that doesn't really make sense. Theological, you know, it's just stuff, I guess anywhere, you know, if you don't really dig in for yourself and find out what it's about, then you kind of construct your, if you don't construct your, you know, your own faith. Um, and I yeah. guess that's, that's where it was for me is trying to figure out my, um, my faith and what it meant to me. And then, you know, from there it's like, okay, how do you, I don't know. <sighs> I guess it changed dramatically in the, the realm that it, it became real for me. Mm. Um, and so, you know, as it became real, my faith began to grow. Um, and as my faith began to grow, I think it was, it was, it was tested, but not in the way that I thought it was going to be tested. You know, it's like, it rarely is. yeah. And so I got moved completely out of that, out of that realm of things of like, just the whole, you know, the devil's always after me and I got to go into the camp and take, took what he stole back. And, uh, you know, it's like that, that was all the theology I got. And I was like, I got to this point, you know, earlier, you know, more recently where I'm like, after me or am I just financing my money? You know, it's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm in a bad, uh, funny. I'm in a bad place, you know? And I'm like, well, what is it really, Cheryl? You know, is it are you are you bad? Are you just make bad life decisions, and now your kids don't like you because you treated them bad, or is it really that the devil's after you? You know, and so I just I think we give the charismatic church gives the enemy way more credit. Like we talk about the enemy so much, you know, and I'm like, why? Why do we give so much breath and time and energy towards someone that we were told not to worry about? Mm. And so it's just that kind of that kind of mindset changed for me. And now I just, I just completely, you know, I got to a point where my, my father-in-law, you know, he said recently, he was like, well, he's like, man, I just think it's awesome that you, you literally just, he's like, you just do your thing. He's like, you just walk. He's like, I don't see you like begging God for anything or doing, you know, acting weird or acting whatever. He's like, you're literally just walking and God's just opening up doors. And I'm like, uh, yeah, pretty much. And so it's, you know, I think the more that I, just began to walk with God and have a relationship with God. That's where I think, you know, and it's, and that's where the music took place in it is because it's not this, I don't, I don't live in that infatuation anymore. It's like, Oh God, you've got, we got to have this emotional experience all the time. You know, every yeah. Sunday, if I'm not crying or, you know, having this big illumination or whatever, it's like, it's okay. No, like in a real relationship, the more I spend time with my wife, it's like, you know, I might not like, I might not have like this huge infascination or, or infatuation or feel this, all these emotions or have, you know, it's like love is not exploding from me every minute of the day. You know, it's, it's, it's that I have a relationship with her and I know for a fact, I know she's not going to cheat on me because I know her, you know, and like, and I spend time with her and I've gotten to know her and, you know, I'm not even thinking about, Oh, is she doing this or doing that? Or what? I, that's not even on my mind. You know, it's like, I'm not worried about the bad stuff or this person or whoever. It's like, no, I, I just want to get to know her. You know, we, we actually, we watched Fireproof, the movie Fireproof last night. And I think it's a great film, but, you know, she had never seen it. So we watched it and we're like, it just, it always gets me because I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, definitely don't have my college degree yet or anything like that on her. But like, you know, just understanding that it's, you know, it, it's a, uh, that not that fire won't ever come, not that things won't happen and the adversary will not come, but it's like he w he was told, you know, it's he's seeking whom whom he may devour. So 
not like who yeah. who he wants to, you know, and he's just like free reign and he's always taking stuff from you and he's always whatever, you know. So I guess in that way it, it dramatically affected me. And then also I was the you know, I was I was eighteen, nineteen, I was the musician that was like, I'm gonna quit my job, I'm not gonna work anymore, I'm just gonna go off to ministry school and I'm gonna you know, work in the church and God's going to bless me. And what, cause this, you know, this is my gift. This is what he's called me to do. But now I'm like, eh. I got, I work as a system admin for the capital city in Florida and it's amazing. Like I get to make a personal impact with people and I still get to do the church thing. Like I still get to go play. Um, you know, matter of fact, the, the worship leader over there called me one night and it's like, Hey, heard you might be interested in whatever, you know, I was like, yeah, well, you know, I used to, we worshiped, you know, back in North Carolina. He's like, oh, well, this is actually an answer to our prayers. He's like, you want to come, uh, you want to start leading worship like after Easter? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, I, and I wasn't trying to seek it out or anything. Yeah. Um, so just my, my experience, I guess, has radically changed in that perspective but i didn't mean to talk so much i just uh no no that's, that's what I'm you're at. here for man we're, we're here to hear where you come from so we know a little bit of of uh of your perspective so now you're in a in a non-denominational fellowship or where are you worshiping now <clears throat> yeah it's a it's a non-denominational thing um okay they're, they're good people, man. Charismatic light, you know, they 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 take they just kind of take it as it is. Like, what's their any kind of like what's the background or is the background? I don't know necessarily what the background is. I know I've discussed with them a little bit about you know what they've done or where they came from and stuff. And I think the pastor is actually from where's he from? He's from Vegas or something like that. But they they've had an incredible impact on the community, and they've been in the prisons and stuff. So. You know, I just, uh, I thought it was really cool that, you know, I, I think any church that is connecting with the community and building a relationship is doing something right. Um, and they're about to build a charter school. So they have a lot of young people and, and I just, it's real diverse. I just, I think it's awesome. You know? Oh man. Well, having a lot of young people means that that will be a thriving, thriving congregation in the next five to five to 15 years. Oh Yeah. That's the, the youth are the youth are the future. You know, we need we need the we need the the middle aged and the old, and the, of course the senior citizens to pass on experience, knowledge, wisdom, disciple, tradition. It is important. I know it's become a bad word, but uh, without the youth, yeah. <laughs> there is no future. Correct. Mm -mm. I would agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. So. So your your style, like, give us some of your favorite um, church music, you know, artists or creators or worship leaders that you've that you've that in, influenced you growing up. Uh, yeah, I would say growing up was definitely <clears throat> early on. I got in, when I was getting more into the faith of things. I definitely got into like early Hill Song and you know the the Unite Hill Song United there. Was their album still has an impact on me? I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but it was like when they got was it, it was a song. Um, it was a song they did. Um, I can't even remember the name of it, but I just know it had a huge impact on me. And uh, later, eventually, when I started playing music and then playing a lot more music, I eventually got into um, a lot of black gospel and mm -hmm. very very much enjoyed Israel Houghton. Yeah, I learned all his songs and then. Um, you know, got into, uh, uh, what was it? I definitely, you know, Kirk, a lot of the old God's property, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So, old uh, Kirk listened Franklin. old school Kirk Franklin. Um, and then definitely listened to my parents had all the CDs of Carmen. So it was, um, probably kind of a, a broad, broad spectrum of things, you know, and I listened to all the, the youth group music of skillet and, you know, all the, the off, you know, underground bands that were contemporary that a lot of youth pastors listen to and stuff. And so just kind of yeah. got a little bit of everything. And then as I grew as a musician, I was interested in even more music. And, um, but, at, and today it's probably, I would have to say, um, the band Rin Collective has had a huge impact on my life. Hmm. Um, I've never heard of them, I don't think. Oh, oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Uh, Rind, 
R E N D Collective. Rend Collective. They are yes, they are a folk band out of Ireland. Um and their their music is incredible and their songwriting is so pure and raw. Um but they have a my favorite album from them is uh they have two albums titled Campfire. Um, they mm. recorded around a live campfire and had a bunch of different types of instruments. And, and they had like a trumpet and an accordion. And a, I mean, they're, they're just all out, man. They're awesome. Um, but it's like, a, you know, folky kind of music. And I really resonated with him and his voice. And just he did a lot of like, you know, just kind of going in and out of like spontaneous moments and stuff. But it's like it's actually good. That was the first time in like the, a matter of a span of like five years when I was getting dried up of CCM stuff. And I heard Ren Collective, and I was like, "This is actually good music." Mm. Like, and it's and it's churchy too. Like, they redid some hymns, and I mean, but it, man, dude, Ireland, people from Ireland have so much passion in in what they do. Yeah. It is ridiculous. But yeah, I would definitely say they had a huge, huge impact on me, and, and I would a hundred percent recommend you know giving them That's a listen a- over and stuff. I- that's a cool mix, you know. So you've got Hillsong, Hillsong United, Israel Houghton, <laughs> Kirk Franklin, uh, and an Irish. Uh, I don't know if they're independent. I just pulled them up on Wikipedia. Um, well, okay, so I don't they're, know. They're, um, they're, they're signed by by Integrity. So uh, always, always, mm-hmm. always makes me makes me laugh when somebody signed to a major label and they call themselves or they're classified as independent anything. It's like, oh, indie rock. You're not independent. You're signed right. to the biggest Christian label there is, um, right? But yeah, but still, you know, I'm I'm a big fan. I actually, have, there's a friend of mine. He's gotten me deep into uh, what what's called Irish trad, which is Irish traditional music. So because I've been trying to get my penny whistle <laughs> skills up to stuff, uh, because I think it's just a cool <laughs> it's it's a cool brand of music. I mean, I grew up with uh, salsa, merengue, or a merengue. I gotta say it right. Um, funk, jazz, R and B. Oh, I'm still very white. Oh, apparently my, my voice is still coming through like very white. Oh well, everybody's just trying to think my, my voice is lower these days. Um, <laughs> I have right. no idea why that is. Um, anyway, so all right, Rend Collective. So you worship yes. for? I mean, as your main vocation for about how long before you? Um, or like at least like part time, but I think that you were doing that as your, main, um, as your main vocation, right? For for a few years before you went to before you moved and got married. Yeah, it was my main for. I mean, yeah, it was my actually it was only my main for about a year, or so give or take, and I mostly did it part time and did some other stuff, you know, like odd job and stuff. Because again, I was sold out to the. This is all I'm going to do all the time, forever, you know, and it just, it just wasn't, it actually hurt me more than it helped me in my personal opinion, looking back now. Um, mm. You know, it's, it's not anything I regret or anything like that. You know, it's, it's just, it's just looking back. I'm kind of like, okay, well probably didn't make the, the best decisions, you know, and, and it's not that I would have put down music necessarily. It's just, you know, why not do both? You know, why not be, you know, go, go work, but also, you know, focus on your passions or what, you know, it's like, I, I just never, I never quite understood that balance. And so I'm, I'm trying to get to understand it better now. Um, so, so it's just, uh, you would say, as you're, as you're starting to, you know, in a couple of years, as you cross into your thirties and you start <clears> mentoring <throat> other young worship leaders and musicians in the church, is that something you're going to encourage them to, man, listen, get, get a normal job, get, get a vocation, get a career and sir, you know, do this on, you know, as the side thing, don't do this as your main thing. What's, what's your, is that, is that the advice you think you'd give or is it a case by case? What do you, what do you, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I think my thoughts like, and I've had, you know, younger musicians that I still talk with that I think are, you know, doing great at what they're doing. But I think you eventually come to the realization of, you know, I got to do something because you either meet a girl or vice versa. You know, you're like, what can I do to keep? Uh-oh. 
did you lose me there? Yep, you said uh, yeah, I did, but uh, you said what do I do to keep? <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's what do I do to keep to keep both? You know, to keep my love for music, but also contribute to society. You know, and so it's. Um, I think for me, my recommendation would just be, you know, um, to work hard at what it is that will allow you to open. Like, is it's going to open more doors? The the side, the back side of that is what I found for myself is when I was taken care of financially for myself, it opened up the, it opened up the ability for me to say no, because you will have pastors that'll be like, like, Oh, you need to do this. And you're not going to disagree with them because they're your boss. You know, you're not going to tell them what you really think. And so that's what it is for me is having that ability to share my opinion with freedom, you know, and to say, this is what I think, you know, or whatever, you know, it's like, and I, you know, I had this church that, you know, within the past year that was, you know, they, they wanted me to help, but they didn't want me to help, but they wanted, you know, the pastor still want to pick songs. And I was like, what about this one for the, you know, I, can't, I think it's for good Friday or something. He's like, well, that one talks about hell. And I'm like, okay, so what's the problem? He's like, well, we're going to have kids there and stuff. I'm like, okay, well, it's still our, you know, this is what we preach. Like that, that doesn't make any sense, you know, and, and I'm able to say no and walk away if I choose to, I'm not held by that check that's coming Sunday you know, for $75 or whatever. I'm like, that 75 doesn't mean anything to me. I'm taken care of. I don't need the money. I'm not conflicted by you saying, Hey, all right, well, I'll give you 150. You know, if you come into what it's like, what, what's the point? You know, I'm a prostitute at that point. I don't want to do that. So, mm. you know, it's like, I don't know. I, I, I had trouble um, just with uh, trying to, do what I felt like I needed to do or really do what I felt like God called me to do because I was swayed by the influence of whatever they were paying me. So yeah, that would, that would probably be um, Yeah. And that's, that's something we all run into um, as, you know, human beings with our own brains um, but it's difficult to submit us. Even if you, even if you're right, it's difficult to submit to authority. Um, right. but that's a, but that's a good lesson. It's a good lesson for, uh, any young worship leaders listening. Hey, listen, uh, just because you think you're right, you may not be right. And even if you are right, guess what? You're not the pastor. <laughs> so at the end of the right. day, he is responsible and going to answer to the Lord, to the highest authority for what happens in the congregation, not you. You will answer to a lesser degree. So uh, whatever the pastor says, go. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, right. But yeah, it is. it, it does stink when, um, and uh, this is where wisdom, this is where praying for wisdom intact uh, really helps. There's, um, uh, I, you know, Jesse, I don't think I've ever told you the story. You'll, you'll get a kick out of this as will uh, the viewing audience. So I was serving at a church in it was the second church in my full time ministry career, because I, I think if you added up all my years in full time ministry, when that was really just about all I did or all I did it's over 10 years. And when you count all the years that I've been on staff in ministry, it's over 20. Um, and then you, if you, you know, add all the years that I've been serving in ministry in general, it's over 30 and which is, that's a lot considering I'm only 40, 43. Um, so I'm serving this, my second church and I have this, uh, young man in the youth group who's a rapper. Um, this is a super diverse church. The church was like, uh, maybe a quarter to a third Filipino, 15% African, 15%, you know, black American, then Hispanics. I mean, it was just like maybe a third of the church was white and two thirds of it was everybody else. It was beautiful. It was like the closest thing I've had to heaven in a congregation. Like you look out and you literally see the nations wow. because people came dressed in their garb, how they came to, to, to worship the Lord. They didn't come and didn't necessarily always dress in the standard American, you know, suit and tie and, and American dress for the ladies. So I had to convince the pastor twist his right. arm. Cause he's like, Oh, he's like, there's no place for that kind of music in, in church. And I'm like, well, there is. And I'm not <laughs> the biggest, you know, the, you know, people that know me, no, I'm not, I'm not some huge rap fan. So I told, I told the pastor, I said, listen, 
I said, if this, if this is a, if this bombs, you know, in every way, if the performance is bad and the deacons and the elders and the, and the church just, you know, gets all upset about it, I will never ask to do anything like this ever again. And he agreed to it. So that was the way. And of course it was, it was, uh, you know, it administered and the people received it like with, uh, Graciously, and this is in the early 2000s. This is not like you could do that today in a, in a non-denominational church, and you know people would be like, "Oh, that's no big deal." You know, this is like in the early 2000s. Rap is still not, still kind of viewed a certain kind of way, especially by church people. As uh, you know, like how, kind of how like pe- church church people looked at Elvis in the 50s. You know, right. oh, that's that devil music. They looked at, they looked at rappers like, "Oh, that's devil music." But what we did was we did a song. We did um, "Left Behind." You know the song from the Left Behind, uh, the Left Behind, the Thief in the Night movies. You know, there's no time to change your mind. The sun is coming, you've been left behind. Right. So it was about getting saved, getting your life right, because Jesus is coming. And then I sang the hook, produced the whole track. I mean, it was bonkers. Um, so you know, word word to the word to the young, you know, a, a music pastor, ser- you know, or servant of the church that. You've got an opportunity and you feel strongly that the Lord has led you to do something. He'll give you wisdom on how to make that happen and without bypassing authority. Because although the the old saying goes, it's easier to get forgiveness than permission. You don't want to do that because some people hold grudges. (laughs) Pastors are human too. (laughs) And even if it goes over, because I've actually had that happen too, where I've done a program that was everything was okay and everybody loved it and it was well received and then got pulled aside afterwards and told, don't you ever do that again. And I'm like, I didn't even do anything wrong. So though the joys of ministry, it's working with people, people are people. So, so that was, was that like the main thing that took you from, from full-time ministry or, or serving as, uh, as ministry as a vocation was, was it just, it wasn't enough to, to have a family or, was it a combination um, of things? Walk us through that whole thing. Definitely a combination of things. I would say that it, I kind of felt leading up to that point that I was like, ah, you know, I, I knew that I wanted a family at some point, and I knew that uh, I knew that eleven dollars an hour was not going to cut it. Mm. So, you know, and I know there's, you know, there are churches that pay fine, and that's that's good. You know, it's like. I'm, I'm glad that they are, you know, my, and actually my, my wife's grandfather, um, he's, he's helped plant a lot of churches and his, his argument is pay your people, pay them well. You know, he was like, he said, if I could do it, he was like, I would rather you, you know, the church somehow get, be able to get benefits and help really help people and impact their families, you know? And, but he said yeah. that in his, in his experience, the problem is that, uh, you know, these guys want to give the church, man, like, let's spend, let's spend 1.4 in, in lights, you know, let's get the big, let's get the big smoke, smoke projectors and, you know, let's, let's go green screen. Let's get, you know, let's buy Apple MacBooks for our whole staff. You know, it's like, it's like, no, but let's, let's take anything, but don't, but don't pay him anything. Let's, let's buy him uh, amazing equipment, right. but they got to be here for free. Yeah, and then they're expected to come to every event, serve at least one event outside of what you're doing. Let's also do, you know, it's like, man, it is so much, and it's just not worth it at the end of the day. Mm. Um, but yeah, I would well, say, yeah, because I mean, how are you supposed to live? Right. You can, I mean, you can't, or even have, or even have time to make tents. Right. Well, you know, it's um. Everybody's got their own, you know, their own view of how, you know, church should pay or shouldn't pay or whatever, you know, and that's fine. Um, You know, I just, I really think that I'm able to, I'm able to make more of an impact, you know, with my family and on other people as I work locally than I ever did in the church as well, because I would, you know, be on a platform and then it would be so many services and then you just don't really get to talk to those people, you know, you don't really get to see them or, they're gone by the time you get done loading all your crap up or what, you know, it's just like, you don't, you don't really get time to focus on the important things. So that's, Mm. 
that's probably what it was for me. It was definitely, I felt, I felt very, very empty to a point. And then I got to a point where it dried me up so much, even in just a year, you know, Pat, really for me, it was the, the previous five years, but just at the point where it was like, dude, I, I was so dried up and my relationship with God became like a, like an old couple almost. Mm. It was like, like I didn't, I didn't know, not that I didn't know this person. It was just like, didn't really talk. You know, we just had kind of a routine we did and, you know, just, I quit talking about the important things and, you know, wasn't really excited about what I was excited about. To be. I just completely forgot why I had a relationship with God to begin with. Like, and I really had to meditate. I took a year, really more than a year away from church just to take time to just, you know, focus on that and get some healing with myself. And just like, and I had to remember back, you know, being, you know, 16 years old and, you know, just, just wanting to worship. Like that's all I wanted to do was just go to church. Like before anybody was there, I just spend time with God. Like that's, that's all I wanted to do. You know, it's like now it, now it's turned into this whole show of impressing people and, you know, look what I can do. And then, you know, it's all about, well, the pastor said this and I'm upset. And it's like, that's all you're focused on. It's just drama and not, you know, and well, we got to get more lights and, you know, it's got to look good. And then you're focused on perfecting yourself, which is great because I think we should be skilled in what we do. And there should be an excellence in what we do for music, a hundred percent. But then you, you get so far into this full-time job and it becomes a job and, any job that you get into that, I mean, eventually you get tired. If you go all out and you don't take time to rest, you don't take time to be with your family and people that you care about. It's like you eventually just, you know, you're like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, it's like, what, what's the purpose? What's the point? What am I impact? I think, yeah. and as a man too, as a man, me personally, I'm like, I want to have purpose. I want to have drive. I want to impact people. I want to build things. I want, you know, like that's where my heart comes at. So I'm like, if I don't feel like I'm producing anything, I get depressed. And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm doing what I was created to do. So, you know, and, and I'm trying to, I have some ideas, you know, for this church that I'm going to that I'm building a relationship right now, but like I've, I've been hearing talks with other musicians. They're like, Oh, there used to be really good musicians here, but they've gone away and I've done this. I'm like, well, I know why it's because the music sucks. I'm like musicians don't want to play this stuff. We don't. And like, and I remember being with other musicians when I was younger that we would just jam. We would just find a church to go to and we would just play for a couple hours, you know? And I'm like, I want to get that started again. You know, we're just, we're just hanging out. We're building a relationship. We know each other. And then, you know, we're able to do what we can do so easily and effortlessly because we know each other, because relationship, you can sit there and, you know, I can sit there and kiss my wife all day, but like, what, why, you know, it's like, if I'm just focused on the infatuation and the feeling good, it's like, if I don't get to know my wife, eventually that relationship is going to die out. We're going to have nothing to talk about, you know, like I, that's just what it is for me. So I, the, the relationship became too important to me to focus it on church a hundred percent of the time. And, and I am, I just be honest with you. I'm, I'm a lot healthier than I was working in the church, you know, than I am right now outside of full-time vocational with the church. That's me personally. I'm not bashing anybody that does. Just me personally, I've noticed I've been a lot healthier, a lot more, you know, relaxed. I'm able to choose to do what I want to do with my family. And, you know, and it's like, it has just been an exuberating experience. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's more of a balance, but I think there's a, uh, what's up caps. Yeah. Good to see you, Chris caps. Um, I think a part of the pressure of ministry is, I believe, why there's a reward for serving, mm -hmm. um, and especially serving in leadership. But that doesn't mean it has to be some crucible. <laughs> it doesn't have to be right. uh, torturous and unbalanced. Um, right. As we saw with the Lord himself, he got away plenty from the disciples and from everybody. And went alone mm -hmm. by himself. And I think, as, as you said today, in, in modern ministry, mm -hmm. um, you're almost made to feel bad. If right. you're, you know, hey, I need, I'm going to yeah. take a Sunday off. Oh, are you, are you uh, can you, is there any way you can come back Saturday night? 
because uh, we're not going to have any music, you know. So there's <laughs> there's pressure, there's stress, there's guilt. Um, yeah. And, and honestly, and this is something we have to be mindful with volunteers as well. With with like like Rob was saying, Rob served in ministry as a guitarist for mm-hmm. years, decades, um, and never received any kind of compensation. He's a classically trained guitarist. Right. Um, you know, playing in mega, mega churches. He was he was playing in one of the largest churches in the country that, that was in Florida and, you know, never got compensation. So, I mean, the, right. one, of, the one, one of the stories he, he he's, 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 I don't know if we've, we've, we've I think you've, you shared it, uh, Rod, if you don't, um, we, I think we've shared it on a live stream, so he wouldn't mind me sharing it. Um, uh, like I'm just like, like I'm telling some kind of big secret, but like they had everybody in the worship ministry, like they wanted them to buy a specific piece of clothing. I think it was like a black dress shirt and it was like a $20 shirt or something like that, which in the nineties was, you know, that was, <laughs> that was a tank of gas and a little bit of, and a you know, like gas in the nineties was less than a dollar a gallon. So that right. kind of gives you an idea of, of what $20 was. Um, but they didn't give them any kind of like they didn't you know hey we're gonna give you guys five bucks or ten bucks or we're gonna buy the shirts for you it's like oh no no you have to wear these shirts if you're gonna serve in the ministry and you have to go buy them <laughs> and i think that's the right. type of stuff that can really just make people feel a certain kind of way because it's like oh, okay so i'm over here playing two three services a week i'm here for uh you know a two two to three hours of rehearsal a week so i'm here like you know, five to 10 hours a week. And you can't just like, you can't just get me a shirt. And, and I've been here for years. It's not like I've been here six, it's not like I've been here <laughs> yeah. six days or six weeks. You know, I've been here for like three years and you can't just get me a shirt. Um, because like you said, well, we got to buy some lights. Uh, we got to buy some stuff and not invest mm-hmm. in people. And I think that's what's really hurt. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm clipping right now. So somebody said they couldn't hear me. And now they say I'm clipping. Hold up. Let me turn my turn myself down here. Tell me if that's better. So I, I turn I'm turning myself down, y'all. Y'all gotta tell me apparently I, I so last week I had a little uh, glitch and I don't know what the glitch is, but it made me sound like Barry White and I still sound like Barry White. So that's uh we're gonna find <laughs> I'm gonna find it out. I'm gonna Rod, if you got time. If you can hop on with me after this and see if, if, because I need somebody that can hear the other side of it. I can't hear it on on my end. Uh, I sound just fine. So you know, and that's that. That's that's the. I've always been mindful, and it's funny, Jesse. I actually learned that lesson at 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 sixteen years, sixteen seventeen years old. Mm-hmm. I uh, my home church had had a major split. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, Chris Caps, Chris Caps had. A, Oh, that's good, Caps. He says, work uniform for worship. That sounds like a job to me. <laughs> Man, so you got to wear this. You got to do this. You got to be here. Oh, yeah. Oh, but oh we're yeah. paying you. You know, and, and it's oh, not 100%. like. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's, it's not like. Um, there's, there's oh, hey, Candy. That... I know her. Oh, you see a Candy in the comments? Uh, Candy. Oh, there she is. Okay, she just popped up. Miss mm-hmm. Candy King Hauser. Um, yep. So I learned this uh, at, like I said, 16, 17 years old. My home church had a split. We went to this uh, Assembly of God church that was in my hometown, right. DeLand. Uh, we knew the, the executive pastor. He was my principal and the assistant pastor of another church in our, in our hometown of Florida when, when we moved there from Massachusetts. So we knew them and, and just a few of the people that at the congregation, but I remember, so I was, I got quickly was, you know, brought into the music program, my, myself and my brother, my brother's a bass player and I'm, you know, sa- a saxophone and we were very good when we were teenagers. Yeah. Um, so we were there for two services Sunday morning, one service uh, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we actually had music before the midweek service. So we did music Wednesday night. I went to service on Thursday night and they had Friday night revival services because Brownsville was having a revival and it was kind of spreading and they were connected mm-hmm. to Brownsville because it was Assemblies of God. So so let's count that, y'all. <laughs> Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, five times I was at that congregation, five times. And Sunday, it was two services in the morning. So three services on Sunday alone. 
Yep. And I was sick one weekend and missed all Sunday services because I was I, I got some kind of sickness on Saturday and was was gone su- Sunday. <laughs> so one of the gentlemen they, at the yeah. Oh wait, sorry. Wait, no. you're, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna like this, or you're gonna you're, it's, it's gonna yeah, make yeah. mad, but but it's gonna show you <laughs> how I approached working with my teams as a young minister. Okay. So one of the one of the people in the church, which was a guy that we knew from this other church, we knew the assistant pastor from, uh, owned mm-hmm. a pizzeria. I worked at that pizzeria, and people from the church obviously would come in to support the business. It was not just because they supported him because he was a part of the congregation, because it was some of the best pizza in town. Right. And the music pastor comes in, doesn't say hi, doesn't ask me how I'm doing. He said, where were you Sunday? And I said, I, well, I was sick. So? Where was this elevation? I'm just kidding. No, no, they didn't, they didn't exist. Yet. No, no, they wouldn't have. No, they wouldn't have. I wouldn't have even gotten that. You know, they don't even, do they even know your name at some of those other campuses? Oh, you're no. Just a, no. You're just a, you're just a, you're just a, you're just a no, line on a, uh, that's, but that's, I don't want to just put that on them because that's, that's a lot of mega churches. You're just a name on planning oh, yeah. center and they don't know nothing about you. So True. that stung me so bad. I almost quit. I almost quit right. music music ministry entirely because and and the reason I I didn't was because of the my home church that had split my uh-huh. music pastor and my youth pastor growing up and the pastor and that whole congregation I was like I know that this is not normal but I but um, I imagined to myself when I got in music ministry and became the music pastor I was like man what if this is the only experience people ever have? I get why people get get ch- get church hurt and never come back, because a pastor teach, treats them that way, or 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 an elder treats them that way, or just a fellow congregant teach you know pre- treats them that way. So, um, yeah, yeah, I was gonna a, say, yeah, I was gonna say that they, they let they let you go home. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, shoot, they didn't have a choice. I mean, I, I, you know, and here's the funny thing. I would ride my bike to some of the church services because it was close enough. It was about a mile, right? Point, point eight miles. So I'm riding my bike almost two miles to and to and from church. And the youth mm-hmm. building for the church was about a half mile from my, from my house. So I could ride my sure. bike there pretty, you know, pretty easily, but still that's, that's pretty dedicated today where like, you know, people can't even drive five minutes to church. I was riding my bike to make sure I made all those services. No Social anxiety. Very, very, Sorry. Very rare. Very rare. But I still did it. Um, so. So. All right. So now here you are, you know, you're going to get back in the saddle in leadership mm-hmm. and, you know, you you you've we've we, we're not going to get into the, the into the four chord thing that's going to be a whole other that we'll we'll, we'll we'll tackle that a different day but i, I you, you know if y'all don't yeah. know jesse do you have summer music on is your summer music have you actually put some of your music out the instrumental stuff you've been working on uh oh yeah i've got a lot out there but i'm i'm working on my stuff's like slowly getting better and better but i i recently wrote a song that i'm really excited to release soon uh, i wrote for maddie and uh my friend my friend Garrett, he's a talented uh, guitar player, even though he won't tell you who he is. But he, I let him listen to it because I have to get my five different opinions, you know, on my songs. And and he goes, he goes, oh my gosh, you cracked the Nashville code. I'm like, well, that's good. <laughs> it's like maybe this one will get will get a little bit of traction. <laughs> is your stuff but, um, under Jesse Day? Like, what do you, what do you release your your music under? I can't remember. It, it is. It's under my name. Yeah. All right, I'm trying to find it on Spotify. I can't find it. Yeah, I'm not that well known as well known as you are. Well, so. Still, it should, it should come. It should come under come out from under your name. Does yeah, it should. I, I, I find it easier if you search uh, one of the songs. What's the what's the what's 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 like one of your most popular songs? Uh, probably time. Boy, this thing, they are making this really hard to find you. <laughs> of course. All right, I'll, 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 I'll look here in a minute. Um, yes, Jesse, so anyway, I, I wanted to put a link in here because, you know, Jesse I'll, I'll is, throw you one. Is, 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 oh, you're going to text it to me? Yeah, I'll throw you a link. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, text it to me because, I, I, well, you know what? I might have it saved on my phone under my Apple Music. 
Um, did you ever release the one that I played sax on, or was that uh, yeah? yeah was that still a night? So I should have that in my library, but I don't. I guess I didn't save it's it somewhere. Yeah. Cycle is cycle your last song. Um, that was the very first one, actually. That's okay. See, I see. This is once again just proving the superiority of Apple Music. Don't use Spotify; it just robs artists. I can't. I really. I really yeah. have a growing animosity for, um, for Spotify. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to. to, to I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get his links and put it in here. But just to, wanted to share with y'all that Jesse is an accomplished musician. He like. He actually plays music that has more than four chords. So he's not your stereotypical, um, gen, millennial um, music music church musician or be musician who's a Christian. Um, so you're getting back in the saddle and I want to spend just the next couple minutes before you go off to dinner and we let you go. Sure. What do you think, what do you think you're going to do differently? From, um, from when, from what, from when you started in music ministry, man, I think, I think differently, probably, <laughs> uh, probably definitely my working on my attitude towards things. Um, how yeah. I approach people. This church is actually very, very good. One of the thing, first things I noticed is they are phenomenal at, um, they're phenomenal at just being with people, talking with people, encouraging people. I mean, these worship pastors, they spend before and after they're at the doors talking to people, you know, and so they know people, you know, they're, they're encouraging other musicians. And I had a conversation with one of them and, you know, that wants me to start leading and stuff. And I said, okay, I'm, I said, I'm really excited because I feel like I have a lot to learn from you guys in terms of just, you know, public relations and being able to just build that relationship. Um, yeah. but I told him as well, I was like, but at the same time, I want to be able to share, you know, I, that, like the musical side of things, you know, what can be done and what, cause I have a heart and a passion and an ear for just the direction of the music and the production of the music. I've really, that's something I've really taken a hold to lately. And so, um, you know, I've just noticed some things as well. I'm like, I think I could really help here too. So just, uh, yeah. really excited about the, you know, the possibility of that. And so, I'll, always working on my craft, but I think I'll definitely spend a lot more time on just with people. Um, I just want to love on people and, you know, try to just spread, spread love, man. I don't, I don't want to get in anybody's face about anything bad or, you know, like, you know, I, I don't want to like pressure or Bible thump or anything. I just want to, I just want to share love, be around other people that also have a common goal with me, even though I may not share exactly the same views that they have on God. It's like, we're here for a common goal. You know, we, I am the church as much as I bagged on the church for a couple of years, you know, it's like how much I hated them. Oh, they don't do this right. Or they don't do this right. Or whatever. It's like, no, like I'm talking about myself. So I need to be that to people. Um, that's one of the things that, uh, that band I shared with you earlier Ren collective, they, they have a podcast called where's the joy in that. So they start every, every word. The title is like, uh, tithing. Where's the joy in that church? Where's the joy in that? You know, it's like everything is, it's pretty good, but, uh, they, they mentioned that, you know, and they're like, well, you are the church. So, you know, start acting right. And so I'm like, ah, you got me. Well, uh, you're, you've been married, what, three years now? Oh gosh. Uh, a little over one year. Okay. A little over one year. All right. Um, when are you guys planning on getting the, getting the, getting the family going with the, with the babies here, here soon? <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping here soon. Beautiful. Well, I'll tell you something you will learn. Love comes in many forms, but uh, mm -hmm. the Bible says that, that the Lord disciplines those he loves. So now we can discipline without thumping mm -hmm. somebody with the Bible. You know, we can do like Floyd Lahan used to do. May he rest in peace. You know, he would just kind of slather the Bible on people. So he, yeah. he, was, an, he was an evangelist in the Church of God, you, for those that, that, don't, that don't know. And he would literally, he would, we, we would joke that he would have like Gideon Bibles and throw them out like Chinese stars because he would, he would just touch people with the word of God and they would, you know, receive a blessing or fall out in the spirit. So yes, we're crazy right. charismatics, I know. Um, <laughs> maybe we'll get into that on a, on a separate episode. Um, yeah, that's a whole different, but I think, uh, there's, there's a delicate balance. And I think as long as we're willing to do that when we, you know, here's the funny thing, like when you want to be nice and you don't want to be mean, um, that's probably when you need to be disciplined. And when you are angry and you want to throw somebody down, that's probably when the Lord's like, be soft.
<laughs> so it's, it's almost always the indirect opposite of what you want to do in your flesh and in your mind. Um, as what I've, what, what I found when I'm, when I'm wanting to be the, you know, the bomb and, and huggy, the Lord's like rebuke them. And I'm like, I don't want to rebuke. I don't want to. He's like rebuke them or, or, or disobey me. And I'm like, Oh, I don't want to be in rebellion. So, right. So, and, yeah. you, know, you know, and, and honestly, man, when, when we go and, and as I'm something that we, and know that, that I've been a bit to you, I hope is a, is a, is a mentor and, you know, discipled you in the ways of church music and the Lord, that's something that you're, you're going to be stepping into and we're all called to do. Um, I'm actually going to read a book. We had a guest a couple weeks ago, Dr. Mike Mills, who wrote a book on discipleship and is literally the Lord is taking him around the world to disciple people. Mm -hmm. He's functioning in the role of a biblical apostle. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read that book hopefully before the year's over. Uh, but the challenge of the book is if you read that book, you're, you are mandated and then responsible to disciple three people because this is the problem in the church, brother. We don't mm -hmm. have discipleship. We have, we have servants which feel like slaves because they're not treated like disciples, which are then move into sonship. Right. You know, he said, the, you know, he said, if you accomplish these things, you'll be worthy to be called the sons of God. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and then you look at how Jesus treated the disciples, you know, very rarely did he rebuke them in public, but boy, he had no problem chewing their butts out in private, <laughs> especially yeah. Peter, but Peter, you know, but Peter liked to talk up. So, you know, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> he, he right. blessed them when he was right and said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, you know, for the Lord, for you having, you know, for the, for the Lord's revealed this to you. And then he'd say, get thee behind me, Satan. He literally called him the devil. <laughs> So I think um, that's something we need to be mindful of as much as we, it's easy to mentor in, mu in music and musicianship because we're passionate about it. And that's our, it's our primary skill set right. in the kingdom, right? But in doctrine, in the word, in faith and walking our faith out, that's where the discipleship is mm -hmm. equally as important. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah, that, that, and that's what I was kind of getting at too. You know, it's kind of on the same page. It's just, you know, how do I, like I was saying earlier, it's like, you know, I might not be playing my, my guitar for people every single day, but like, you know, what, what are the, the relationships at work supposed to look like? You know, like why, why is my coworker asking me that I've never talked to church about, I've never talked to God about is all of a sudden asking me what I think about a scripture, you know, mm. that's not too heavily into it. You know, I'm just like, what? Yeah. he's like, yeah, you're kind of religious. I'm like, not sure how to take that, but I'll answer your question. <laughs> but yeah. you know, it's like, what, what does that mean? You know, why does he talk to me so much? I don't, you know, and I'm like, I'm not trying to push anything, you know, it's just, it just kind of happens. And then, you know, little small things that you do that like just little pieces of encouragement, even though I'm not like, you know, quoting a whole book to you. It's like, it, you know, you have no idea what kind of impact your words make on people that could turn their entire day around. It's like, and you didn't even know they were having a bad day, even though they were smiling. There's like one thing you said, and they're just like, you know, just made their whole week or whatever. You know, you just really don't know. So, you know, while you're, as you're walking into that and what you're called to be, which is not, um, you know, I don't, I don't consider me as like a, oh, I'm called to be a musician. No, I'm called to be a son of God first. I'm called to be, you know, beloved first like that that's who i am first it's not anything there's a who is it leaf i don't know if you listen to any leaf, leaf hetland stuff but that's mm -hmm. you know that's so one point he made in this book was uh people think all the time that it's uh do you have b you know do have b if i do this all these things right i can have all these things and then i'll be love but no it's it's b have do okay? because sorry about that because of um because i because I am, you know, be who you are. I already am a son of God. I already am loved. So then mm. it becomes, now I have all these things because God has given them to me because he owns it anyways. And now I go do, you know, I do that out of who I am, not because I want to be a son of God. I'm going to do all these things, you know? So mm. that's kind of where, where my point is, but yeah, I'm, I'm, unfortunately I'm going to have to wrap it up here. Oh no, that's good, brother. I think it's good. Uh, you know, here's the, here's the beautiful thing. Cause that's, that's, this is the argument that we've had between the Protestant church and 
to some degree the Orthodox Church or the Catholic Church, you know, it's like, well, is you know, it's not works based salvation, but because you're saved, you work. Well, honestly, if we're all walk, walking this out correctly, it looks the same. <laughs> Your 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 right. your your faith is evident because of your works, mm. love you know, and your fruit of the spirit is evident of your life. You you exude and and produce this fruit because you're in the spirit. So right. either way, we should end up at the same place, though we might disagree as to which yeah. came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Right. Oh, brother, go ahead and enjoy your dinner. Enjoy your family. Thanks, you know, thanks so much for the last minute coming on. I literally hit him up, got y'all, like 15 <laughs> minutes before we came on. I was like, hey, you want to be on Soul Vitamins? Because he just texted me out of the blue. And I didn't have a guest tonight, and I was going to, you know, go solo. But I was like, it's so much better to have conversations, especially someone that's, you know, of the younger generation and going to be leading uh, the, the younger generation. You know, I mean, I'm getting a lot of grays. And Jesse, I don't think has, do you have any grays yet? Not yet. Still going strong. Nice. See? Yeah. So still got 100% of his youth. All right, brother. Enjoy your, enjoy your dinner. Enjoy your wife. We love you and bless you. Yep. Love you too, man. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Yep. We got your, we got your links here in the, uh, in the, in the, in the comments and I'll be sure to put it in the description on the YouTube on soul vitamin. So y'all make sure you go follow Jesse's music. I'm going to let him go and I'll wrap up. Uh, that way I don't keep him here for another five or five or 10 minutes while I'm wrapping up, wrapping up the show. So you go ahead and go out of here, brother. <laughs> All right. Thanks man. Talk to you later. Be blessed brother. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. In that beautiful y'all, you know, He's uh, he's learning as he's going and growing in his faith, and that's that's just the most important thing. We have to learn, we have to grow, and we need this younger generation. And praise the Lord that he didn't get so burnt out and so frustrated with with the you know just the function of human beings and how we mess up. Uh, you know, the Lord's church. We try to steward it the best we can, but you know. We've all sinned and we have all fallen short of God, of his glory. And unfortunately, along the way, we, we need to be careful to not insulate and isolate either the old or the young, because we have it in both sides of the church right now. We have young churches isolating the old and saying, get out of here. You have no purpose. You become irre irrelevant. And then you have old churches that are saying, well, if you young people aren't going to do it exactly our way, you don't have any place in here. So, and this is nothing but the devil. This is the devil because you have nothing being passed on to these young people by the old that have made mistakes that have, that have, that have gone through and walked out their faith. And they've seen things. They've been on the earth 50, 60 years. So they're dooming the younger generation to repeat <laughs> said mistakes. It's uh, it's incredibly sad. Yeah, it was, it was, it was Caps. He he is such a blessing, um, and I I expect great things um, from Brother Jesse and his ministry. So I'm gonna turn up my volume here on the uh, on my phone just so I can see who's here. Yeah. It's, so this is so weird. I did a test. I did a test stream. This afternoon on my, so if you guys aren't in the Gabriel Bello uh, group, join the group. I'll see if I can find it and, and put it in the chat. Um, I did a test stream and it sounded fine. There was no Darth Vader, Barry White voicing. Yeah, yes, Miss Launder, you are 100% cor correct. We need to build the bridge. And, you know, I'm at the tail end of that bridge, you know, in seven years, I'll be in my 50s. Of course, here's the thing. I don't believe it's it's an age thing. I believe it's a mentality thing as we see many thought leaders and culture leaders today are not young. J Jordan Peterson is not young. Um, John MacArthur is, is far from young. And before he passed away, R.C. Sproul was not young. Uh, brother, brother Timothy, Tim, uh, oh, he's the overseer in the Church of God. Somebody help me out. Tim, it's not Tim Drake. That's, that's, the, that's the third Robin. Tim Hill. Tim Hill, you know, very, I mean, he's the, he's the head of the church of God and very, very relevant to, to the youth, the youth in the church of God know who he is. Y'all give me, give me some other examples of somebody that is culturally relevant. Vody Bauckham. I mean, it's so easier for me. Isn't it sad? It's easier for me to, to run off in the reformed church 
that that just goes to show that you know the Pentecostal is uh, the Pentecostals are kind of doing I think a little bit of a shoddy job, um, or maybe I'm just out of the loop. Me, y'all tell me. Maybe I'm out of the loop, and maybe I'm becoming reformed in my old age. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan would have some jokes for that. He'd say uh, it was it was predestined uh, from the beginning of time for that to happen. Um, well, you know, I mean, if there's Bishop Alan DiDio of Encounter Ministries and Mario Murillo, um, and uh, what is it? Uh, the Greens, the Greens. Um, oh my gosh, I'm I'm friends with them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Him and his wife, they were doing revival stuff during during COVID. Um, so, yeah, um, there are people that are building bridges, but we need more of them in the local bodies. We really do. Um, uh, most, I'd say close to half of the churches I, I have served at in 20 years, there's been a huge gap, or even the larger churches that I've served in, I've served in several mega churches, y'all, with thousands of people coming on, on any given Sunday. And those congregations all had, the youth had their own service on Sunday. And it, and it bugged me. It was like irritated me, but it didn't like, I wasn't like pushing back until the, the sec, until the last church that I was at, the last mega church I served at where I was adamantly, oh man, okay, I heard, I heard it, I heard that uh, crack a little bit. Sorry, y'all. I was adamantly against it, vocally against it um, because I saw the folly in it. Mostly because they would have the youth come every fifth Sunday and do the music and they had never served nor been mentored, nor been discipled. They they just did their own thing. You know, uh, and I know this is going to sound harsh, but there was a book that I was given in my formative years in full-time ministry, and it was uh, specifically to music ministers because, oh man, hold up. I've got to find this video, y'all. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to end with this. And this is why this is so important. This book talked about what was called bastard ministries, fatherless ministries. You know, I know that's harsh. Oh, it's a curse word. No, this is, we use that, that word today is used out of context. A lot of people don't even know what that word means, but it's, it's fatherless, fatherless ministries, music ministries and music ministers and these Christian music artists that were using and this still happens to this day. They use the congregation as their platform to build fame for themselves and a career in music. But they don't have any, they don't care about the authority of the local congregation. They don't care about discipling or being a part of that local congregation. Um, and this pastor, I just saw this. Uh, yeah, you're 100% right, Caps. Um, it is not just the mega churches. It's trickled down to the smaller churches as well, 100%. Ah, thank you, Parker and Jesse Green. Thank you, Rod. Did you go looking? Did you go looking at Facebook? Because, I, yeah, that, that was I was escaping me. Miss Londa had a good point. Yeah, we need to bridge the gap between the younger and older ones. I, I, I quoted her, but I don't think I, I, I quoted her and gave her credit for that. But I am going to find this thing that I sent to... Nope. Nope. Hold up. I'm going to have to look in my uh, reactions. It should be here in my reactions. Okay. Let's see. Oh, maybe it was this one. Let's see. Oh, yep. Here it is. Okay. So I'm going to pull this up and we're going to watch this. I'm going to comment on it just a little bit and then we're going to wrap it up. So I'm going to do, which is, got to see. Oh, that's right. I can't. Okay. I got to add a source. That's right. I'm, I'm not using my, um, I'm not using OBS. OBS was really noisy this afternoon for whatever reason. So I need share screen and it's, there we go. Yeah, that's the one we want to share. Okay, here we go. It's because of the small things that we let in. And those small things, listen to me, are not always the most obvious things. Some of you are ready for me to start going on about abortion. If you don't know that killing babies is a problem by now, in 2024, if you don't know, then I don't know what to do for you. I don't, I, I cannot look, it's not about my body, my choice. It's not about Democrat versus Republican. If I have to break. Oh, hold up, hold up. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Hold up. 
wrong clip because the one that uh, the one that I shared it was it's the same pastor, but it will man it hit so hard. It's that same pastor. Um, he talked about the. Man, why won't it come up now? What is this guy's name? I promise it's going to be worth it. I apologize I'm for, for the delay. Elijah Chanak. Ooh, boy. The easiest way. Oh. To Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for this. Here we go. A microphone in the church now is to become a worship leader. It's the easiest way to authority because now you do not have to be licensed. You do not have to be educated in biblical doctrine. You do not have to understand hermeneutics, homiletics. You do not have to understand ecclesiology, pneumatology. You don't have to understand eschatology. You don't have to have any level of understanding of historical or systematic theology. You don't have to have any understanding. All you have to do is have a voice, then you get a mic. Then Ooh. you get a mic, then you get an EP. Then you get an EP, then you now go on radio. Then you go on radio, and then now you begin to increase in followers. And then now, we have worship leaders who have more followers than pastors and all of a sudden now I can now start a ministry I do not have to go through any level of discipleship I just have to be talented and once I'm talented I can now mount the podium and begin to teach damnable heresies facts looking at you reckless love we said sing, you're now teaching, break it down. You have to be qualified to teach. The Bible speaks about elders being apt to teach. And so now the greatest platform for discipleship is the Instagram live. Example, the easiest way <laughs> to get a microphone in. Oh my goodness, I, I almost feel like I just need to let that thing go one more time. I've seen it, I think that's the fourth time I've seen it. I, I, just, I just found that the other day. I mean, it maybe was, three days ago and I, I I watched it two or three times immediately it just and then of course I started going through all those videos and that was the other one that he was talking about if if I have to explain to you why abortion is a sin if I have to explain to you that homosexuality is a sin um yeah so yeah Elijah Chanak yeah I'm, I'm gonna be checking this this this, this guy out and he's very interesting because he's uh he's walking around with an american flag as his uh as his you know ch church rag and in his comments it has uh or in his bio it has the uh oh uh, where was it i thought he had like the the american flag some kind of um whatever whatever country he's from in in the continent of africa and then uh, the, the the cross i think so anyway yeah something to chew on something to chew on for sure uh because this is and this is i think what i want to talk about this is what I, you know i want to get into that with jonathan next week um why we sing what we sing and you know i don't know what i'm going to call it but i'm, I'm going to try to think of a catchy title maybe y'all can help me with what we should call it because we we do there's there's a lot of things that i was actually you know i'm, I'm looking forward to i want to have this discussion with maybe get sharvis and uh and pastor james so my, my brother sharvis witted and um oh pastor james what is pastor james he is his name he, he put his name different on facebook and always makes me i always want to call him james things but it's james coulter that's it james pastor james coulter uh who was a, a worship leader and now a, a lead pastor and still a worship leader leader um why we sing what we sing in church today and why yeah just kind of the purpose of, of praise and worship and and some of the songs that we sing in, in in praise and worship time that are spiritual and they're encouraging but they're not songs of praise or worship you know so that's um and especially in this context because exactly what he said we have a lot of people that are undiscipled uh you know they're blessed with talents but you know we we call a lot of talented people anointed because they give us the goosebumps 
But goosebumps are not the anointing, okay? Let's just get that out the way right now. Goosebumps are not the anointing. So just because you got a platform and we know your name and, you, and your song makes people emotional, Reckless Love, I'm looking at you. And if you all like that song, good for you. Uh, we are going to disagree, and I, I am not going to apologize for not for, for having strong, strong issues with that song because I believe that is damnable heresies, as, as, uh, as that pastor just said. I be, you know, to, to say the Lord is reckless and it ain't poetry, you know, might as well call him adulterous. Well, I'm just being poetic because he loves everybody. You're going to say that too? That's, that's, that's the viral clip. That's going to get clipped out. <laughs> Michael, we're going to, that's what's going to get clipped out and go everywhere. And he said, he said, what? Uh, yeah, that song makes me, it, it gets me, it gets me very ups, uh, uh, upset because we sing. Or do we, do you pay attention to what we sing in church? Cause I tell you what, there's some stuff that, that, that I've seen on the screens and this, this started happening to me about six, seven years ago. Uh, when I wasn't the, the main person in charge, serving a, a, a part of, as a as a team, and I started really, I was always led by if the if the music didn't jive, that's what I looked to, that's what I gravitated to first because I'm you know as much as I am a lyricist and a songwriter, to me if the music doesn't speak, I don't care what the song says, but because all this music doesn't speak, I had to become a lyric inspector, and I started really dissecting these lyrics and saying, well that doesn't make sense, well that's not, I don't know about that, um, it, maybe to a fault. But what's worse, to overthink the lyrics or to not think of what we sing at all? All right, let's see. Uh, there we go. Miss uh, Sister Candy says, that's good. I ask that a lot. If it's not biblical, don't sing it, even if everyone is singing and loving it. Yeah, no, I've had to, uh, you know, we had uh, Brother Leonard Jones on here a few weeks ago. And I, I, that's actually, I need to get him on this. I need to get the, bring in the heavyweights in this conversation because he he's to the point where it's beyond the spiritual accuracy of it or the, you know, scriptural. I mean, obviously that's, if, th if that's an issue, yeah, but he's walked out. He, he shared in the interview that they were singing something so mundanely repetitive in, in vain repetition. He told, he said, Lord, I don't believe you're in this and I don't believe you're here. If they sing this one more time, I know you're not here and I'm walking out. And they sang it one more time and he walked out walked out of this like just left left the building so uh yeah well you know i yep yeah, miss miss candy had uh had family leave her church because you because she stood against that song you mean reckless love well good for you good for you i mean uh, at what at what point at what point are we just gonna let amy you know i mean they're singing uh, andy andy stanley's church they were doing highway to hell and they were uh there was a church several churches when the the greatest showman came out they were doing that never enough song i mean it was a secular song and uh i was in a church service once where they they, they did an adele song and i'm like what 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 are we doing you know i mean this just I mean, it's this. It's not you raise me up, you know. It's not. Um, did you ever know you're my hero? You know, uh, you know, wind beneath my wings type of thing. Where it's like, well, that can kind of go either way, you know. Or the prayer, you know. It's not like the spiritually emotion, you know, like it's something that's kind of like that's it's on the line, and most people don't get offended by it. The only thing the reason they're offended is like, well, this was a secular pop song, but you look at what it's saying, and it's like, well, yeah. Yeah, you know that's it's arguable. It's it's on, honestly certainly better than uh, who was like that I having. Oh, I was having. I had a lunch with a uh, Anglican priest. I'm hoping that we're going to have him on uh, for an interview. Uh, Anglican Orthodox priest, and he said basically, if you can take a, if you can change the the words from Jesus to baby, then you probably shouldn't sing that song in church. And I said, oh, you mean like the South Park episode? <laughs> And he, he, it took him a while. He said, you know, he doesn't really watch South Park, obviously. But when I started describing to him the, the situation, he said, uh, he said, oh yeah, now he's, I said, I said, Pastor, you literally des described the, the the episode of the song. Literally, the main, you know, Cartman was taking love songs and just taking instead of taking instead of singing Baby. He's and he literally said this to his people, his little kid friends in the band he said listen we just take out baby and put in jesus and everybody he became you know a mer award-winning artist i argue you could do that today i argue we are doing that today 
a lot of our songs in church are that. They're bad bubblegum pop love songs. This is why I, you know, I'm, I agree a lot with my reform, with our reformed brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, now I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I don't say, well, don't you listen to the hill song? Don't listen to Bethel. Don't listen to these people. Don't, don't you do that. I don't go that far, but like he, like, like that pastor just said, oh man, they sing really well. Put them on, let them lead worship. They don't know, and then they go. They go to exhorting. They open their. They go to opening their mouth, and they are wrong. And then they're writing songs for the church to sing, and they're just writing what they know because they haven't been discipled. This is and this is what Jesse and I were talking about. This is why discipleship is so important. This is why Jesus said, "Go ye to the four corners of the world." We're not flat earthers here. Um, <laughs> go ye into all the world, pantata ethne, and make disciples. Don't make converts. He said, make disciples, baptizing them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and casting out devils and laying hands on the sick, all of it. We we like to just hyper-focus on this one and, oh, hold up, <laughs> Caps, I got it for you. I got it. Inconceivable! Hopefully, that, hopefully that's, that's actually coming through. Man, I am low. Oh my gosh, J Rod. I, <laughs> I promise you, Rod, there has been a church that they may not have sang it, but they probably put that video up in the congregation. I, I, uh, I would say that has definitely happened. So all things for us to ponder, but uh, do me a favor, y'all, before, you know, when... I want you, if the if the if the Lord don't come and the creek don't rise, to come next week and or just go onto the Soul Vitamins Facebook page or go into the comment section on a, on a YouTube video and and share what did your church sing, and I want you to either bring something bring out something that stuck that stuck out to you, positive or negative. If they sang an old hymn that had a lyric, or if they sang a new song that, man, this song, you know, I've never heard it before, and I don't know who sings it, but this line just really stuck out and encouraged me because it reminded me of this scripture. Or give it, you know, bring the opposite. Say, you know, we sang this song, or because there's even some hymns. This is what I loved about serving with Pastor Corey Colravi at my pres at the Presbyterian Church. He would he would ask. Politely, that's the that's the, the he was so polite because some, I've worked with some pastors that order you to do stuff, and he would just ask, and I would lovingly comply with joy in my heart. Let's not sing the verse of this song because if you look at this, if you look at this line, it really doesn't line up with the doctrine of the church. So we're not going to sing this stanza. So I would like you to sing stanza, you know, verses one, three, four, and five. Or one in three will do the benediction and come back and sing the fifth stanza at the end as the benediction. But let's not sing the second verse for these reasons. In old hymns, that's that's saying something, y'all. That is caring for your congregation, for your sheep, and being careful. We have to guard ourselves. You know, the, Satan is roaming like a lion. And in a lot of, and he has snuck into the church in any way he can, he sneaks in. So we have to keep our guard up. This is why Ravi Zacharias's, you know, ministry was important. And it's a shame that it was, you know, people don't, they don't even like to say his name anymore because of his mistakes. You going to tell me he was any worse than Solomon? And we, we quote Proverbs every every week, don't we? I mean, don't we do oh, read a proverb a week, you know, daily. You read, read a, a chapter of Proverbs every day of the month, and you get through the whole chapter 12 times, you know, 12 times, a, you know, a year. Well, you know, what was he doing that, that, that Rabbi Zacharias wasn't doing? I mean, I would argue that what Solomon doing was way worse, way worse. And we ain't got no problem reading <laughs> First, Second Kings, so, you know, Proverbs, Song of Solomon. I'm just saying. Um, there's one by older congregation that's already out there. What are you talking about, Caps? I'm sorry. I, 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 I saw it pop up, but I didn't see it when you said it to, to, to put it in, into context. But I want you all to share that next week. And uh, to lighten up, to lighten the spirit, I'm going to play something that's just funny. Um,
I want to I want to just do a little bit of something super duper funny. So this is a skit. Uh, my brother Todd um, <laughs> Todd Fallen shared this text texted this. Uh, he's the drummer at our, at our congregation, and he uh, <laughs> he uh, he sent this the other day, and I had not seen this in years. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this uh, Rod's earlier message. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's what he was talking about, uh, Caps. He was talking about the Jesus Christ is my, you know, the the word that you can't say on the internet or that you shouldn't say on the internet unless you're unless you got enough melanin in your skin, which I have enough melanin, but people would still find it, you know, that's just not a proper word, you know. It's such a you know, maybe we'll do a whole episode on that. I, that'd be something. The N word in church. Uh so ridiculous. Good. Hey, Daryl Oldham. See, start talking talk about black stuff. And, and Daryl, who is, I mean, my goodness, man, he's, I got more melanin than he does, but he's blacker than I am. 100%. We got to get, you know what, D? We need to cut, we need to get you in here and you need to share your testimony. You need to get in here and share your testimony, D. Y'all, my brother, Daryl Oldham, D. Brown Oldham is, had such an incredible life and career and how he is now in full-time ministry. Yeah, we, we got to get you up here, bro. We got to get you in here. Those, yeah, they are relatable. It's 100%. No, D, you need to go back and watch this episode, especially the clip. I'll send you, I'll text you the clip um, that, that, I, that, that, I, that I played earlier of this pastor talking about the easiest way to get the platform in church. And I'm telling you, if you don't think that Satan is sending in people into, into our congregations, that are out there looking for a platform, looking for worship. I mean, if you don't think that's happening, you are blind. That's all I'm going to say about that. Well, it's not all I'm going to say about that. It's, uh, that's what I'm going to say. That's Let all I'm going to say about that today. So I'm going to play a little bit of this song. Um, hopefully it doesn't get, you know, get flagged too bad, but uh, just to lighten up the mood, because, you know, we've been, we were, we got pretty serious between me and Jesse. So this is You Better Whisper. You better whisper a prayer from uh, Ricky Smiley, and this is just a funny church skit that uh, yeah, just it just brings me uh, incredible joy. So after this, I'm gonna bid y'all a good evening. So make sure you go to my website if you're looking for good original Christian music. Go to my website. Go to Spotify. Well, if you absolutely have to use Spotify, use Spotify. If not, I'd rather you listen to it on YouTube. I make less. But Spotify is just, it's just, uh, it's second cousin to the devil. So if it have, if that's your music platform, by all means, listen to my music there. But go to Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube. I, all my music is there for free. And I've got uh, t-shirts like these, especially my musicians. You definitely want to, to get you one of these. These deserves more than four chords t-shirts. Whisper a prayer. And uh, yeah, I've got some really cool stuff coming out of ways that I want to, I'm going to build a support system because what we're doing here in Gabriel Battle Music, what we're going to be doing here on By Faith, which we're going to have hopefully some live video happening Monday with some construction going on. And uh, brother Jonathan's going to be on there with us, but we want to see you here on Soul Vitamins. So make sure you like this stream, comment on this stream, share this stream, especially with a, with a fellow church musician or just share it with, with a fellow believer. All right, we're here doing, uh, you know, Jonathan between Jonathan and I, we're we got over 40 years, actually probably over 50 years in, 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 in church ministry and music ministry. So, um, yeah, we believe we're doing, uh, we're doing what the Lord has, has called us to do. So with our music, with our giftings, and most importantly, trying to make disciples. So that's it. Here's a little bit of whisper of the prayer, and then we're going to call it a night. Jesus loves you. And so do I. Here we go. That's what you got a whisper a prayer. Yeah, you ain't got the holler. Just whisper, whisper, whisper to Jesus. Just whisper what you're hollering for. Oh, you gotta! Why y'all slinging so loud in the background? Oh, you got to do 
and wasp of wrath in the world. <laughs> you need to stop hollering at Jesus. Stop hollering at the Lord. You need the whisper of wrath. <laughs> Give it a tune. Hold on. Shh, shh, shh. 